Okay. Um, can you hear me? Good. Okay. Um, Philip Lane asked me would I speak at this event about potential output, and uh, so I agree. It's uh, by definition, I think potential output is is a sort of academic concept. Um, there's no uh, official time series. Uh, you won't see the CSO figures on potential output. Uh, so I, I think by the nature of the, of the concept I've been asked to discuss here, I think this is perhaps a slightly more academic talk than, uh, than, than John's, um, well, than some of the others that uh, have been in this sort of series. Um, but it does dovetail, so some of the things I've talked about do uh, kind of dovetail with some of the themes in, in, in John's talk. Uh, and also, we shouldn't underestimate the, uh, uh, the power of, of, of academic concepts and ideas and, and, and the idea of potential output and the role that it plays in thinking about the economy and planning for the economy and fiscal policy um, it, it is, is quite important. Okay. So. Well, I didn't turn it off. Uh, <laughs> you don't shout like me. I, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't shout like John. I knew you didn't need that microphone at all. Um, Stop working? Okay, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, 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 I'll shout so I don't have a microphone. Okay. Uh, so, let, 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 me, let me describe what I'm, what I'm going to talk about. Firstly, I think it's worth clarifying to kind of the kind of audience that we have here um, what exactly potential output is. It's, uh, it's, it's not 100 percent clear. I started asking myself what, what is potential output, but I think there's different possible interpretations. I'll, I'll talk about uh, about those interpretations uh, and the various uncertainties that go with measuring potential output. Uh, introduce a couple of frameworks that economists use for thinking about potential output. Um, very simple ones in terms of breaking up into labor input, labor productivity, uh, production function approaches for, for, for modeling labor productivity. Um, I'll present some uh, some evidence uh, in terms of those breakdowns uh, historically, uh, what they told us about the, the period of expansion uh, leading up to 2007, and sort of what they told us about the, the, the capacity for further expansion in the Irish economy as of, as of 2007. And really based on that, rather than on so much on, on, on current events, I think I, I, I will present some calculations or some suggestions that, that there are probably reasons for, for, for being, I think, pessimistic about the, uh, the potential output growth rate of the, uh, of the Irish economy. Uh, I think that, that, that it's unlikely that we're going to see the Irish economy return to anything close to the, the growth rates that prevailed in recent years. Uh, finally, we'll see how much time I have, and I'll sort of connect this back to the discussion about uh, about fiscal policy and the concept, a sort of related concept of a structural uh, budget deficit. Okay, so talk about what is what is potential output. Um, I think this this is something that can have lots of different meanings, uh, and I think as with a lot of concepts in economics, I think it's it's. It's something. It's a, it's a concept that has has, uh, has sort of drifted in meaning over time, relative to what it maybe meant when it, when originally introduced. Um, I'm not sure I was alive when the concept was introduced, but I, I, I have this uh, vague, 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 vague sort of just, uh, recollection that that potential output, at least at first, when sort of introduced by by, by Keynesians in the 50s, perhaps the 60s, uh, had a connotation of it was a sort of a maximum achievable level of output. You know, that there was some level of GDP that the economy was capable of producing, um, and that was the potential level that you could achieve. It, it basically didn't really make sense to talk about uh, GDP being 105% of potential. If you could do that, then that was the potential output of the economy. Uh, but of course, economists learned uh, uh, some, some, some lessons about pushing the economy too far and about the negative consequences of producing levels of GDP over and above uh, what's, what's sort of a long run uh, average levels of resource utilization. And what people tend to mean today about uh, by potential output is some notion of a sort of a maximum quote unquote sustainable level of output. 
where sustainable usually means something to do with not running the economy too hot, not create, creating some sort of inflationary uh, uh, problem. I think there's also two different concepts at play when thinking about potential output, uh, which maybe aren't often distinguished, which is, on the one hand, people talk about rates of potential output growth. You know, what, how fast can the economy grow? And, you know, we go and look at, uh, this is a reasonably easy concept to understand. You know, we can go and look at average growth rates for various types of economies, economies that look like ours or economies that don't look like ours, and we can say, you know, on average, this economy grew at that rate. We look a bit like them, we should hope to to achieve that. And that's, that, that's one thing, and I think that's a pretty something we can be uh, uh, a bit more concrete about and use both time series evidence, what's happened in a particular economy in the past, and, and cross-sectional evidence to, to put some light on it. At the same time, there's, there's, the, one might think this is the exact same concept, but it's not. There's this, the same concept of the level of potential output, which is, you know, what, what's that, what, what's, all good concepts have a, have a concrete question that you can kind of phrase and say it's the answer to that question. This is a quite a long-winded question, but I think the level of potential output is, you know, what would the level of output be in resource utilization at its, is at its long-run level, and the economy is growing at its potential rate. So it's the, it's the growth rate in part one, but, it, but, but the resource utilization is at, is at its, its sort of uh, long-run level. Now this is actually really tricky uh, to, put, to put numbers on. Um, people talk about the out output gap set. Output, the output gap is the gap between where we are now, the thing, the number you can you know, read in the CSO's release, and then this notion of a sort of long run sustainable level. This is a very tricky concept. I'll talk about uh, various issues to do with it. One of the problems with it as well is that, is that, is that acting on these numbers, putting numbers on it and getting it wrong, can have negative consequences for, uh, for policy actions. Now, a lot of people, uh, when they talk about potential output, they have in mind something on the following line. They have some notion that you know, the underlying sort of long-run productive capacity of the economy isn't something that changes day to day. You know, it, it changes quarter to quarter, year to year, but it's sort of smoother than the actual economy uh, or actual economic growth. So people tend to model potential output as some sort of slow-moving trend, and then actual GDP kind of returns back to the trend over time. But of course, as any of the sort of professional economists here know. How do you measure trends? There's lots and lots of ways to measure trends. Um, you know, there's, you can do straight lines on, on, on log GDP, but the trends change over time. There are medium run fluctuations, potential output, uh, productivity growth is fast for a while and then slow and so on. And economists, academic economists, have lots of clever <coughs> tricks for modeling these changing trends over time. So, you know, how do you press the filter and all those kinds of things. Uh, but, you know, basically pick, pick five different economists and they'll probably give you five different detrending measures, they'll give you five different output gaps uh, that come out of that. Also problematic is that it's not even 100% clear that this particular concept of sort of reverting to trend uh, is even correct. And, and, and John alluded to that in, in his talk before. Uh, you know, consider the following kind of slightly academic uh, uh, sideline here. Just, you could, put forward the following two models for, uh, for, for modeling GDP growth and a sort of deterministic trend and a stochastic trend model. You can put forward a model which output equals something that grows at rate G plus uh, a mean shock. Or you can put forward a model which output growth is on average G uh, and uh, uh, plus a shock. So in both, in both models the average pretty clear potential output growth is G uh, in, in both cases. However, the, the mean reversion predictions are completely different. In model one, yes, on average, the economy always comes back to being this sort of alpha plus GT. Uh, in model two, the shocks every period, the shocks every period don't affect potential growth uh, in the future. And there's no uh, sort of reversion to mean. Uh, and the real bad news from the sort of research frontier is that basically both of these models can fit the data uh, and statistical text tests generally can't tell you which one is which one is good or which one is bad. That's probably the research frontier of about 15 years ago, but it, it's still, I think, basically uh, basically true. I think one of the reasons that statistical tests can't distinguish between between those two models is is that you know models are models and reality is reality, and in reality, probably the messages uh, that come from both those models they both contain an, uh, elements of truth. So those who see mean reversion. Uh, Think about business cycles, 
and the fact that a lot of fluctuations in business cycles are due to variations in